Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm, and today uh, Joel and I just moved these cattle, these bulls, off of this stockpile, this paddock that we gave them yesterday, and uh, gave them another paddock down there. So we're strip grazing again back up the hill here, starting at the bottom. That's where our power source is, and they're walking way back over to that barn. That's where that uh, continuous water is coming out at. Um, I wanted to show you what they did though. They went to, you know, I men made mention, it looked like you have a bunch of turkeys in here after 24 hours, and that's kind of what happened here. There's not too much that they didn't go in and take their noses and bust the snow back and get the grass. Um, again, how good is your stockpile? Well, Look at look at the mineral patch. That is a really really good indication of how good your stockpile is. If it's stacked up, you know, six six inches tall in a big old mound, um, it's probably not that good a stockpile. And matter of fact, they're, they're not going to be doing too well on that. Well, here's another. Look at this one. Covered it up with snow. It's cold out here. I don't see anything. Oh, yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Folks, the, the advantages of keeping your animals out on the land, even in the wintertime, is the, the tremendous nutrient recycling that you're getting. So this grass was grown in, um, well, we haven't grazed this since the 1st of August. Um, the bulls were taken off this farm for about 35 days. We did receive some timely rain the first week in August, and so we grew a bunch of grass in here. And so the uh, comparison to that would be if we'd have came in here we grew all that grass in August, came in with a mower, a rake and a baler, mowed all this, put it up in a bale. And you know, in this kind of terrain, you would have taken a chance of flipping your tractor over or your <laughs> your, your bales would end up down in that lake, whatever. Very dangerous to be putting equipment on land that's this, this rolling. So th this is grazing land. So it happened for thousands of years as it was grazed with ruminants. And so I'm going to, well, here's a spot they didn't move right there. I'm going to take my foot and kick that back. I'm going to show you what's underneath there. There it is. It's, it's, it's pretty good feed. Got pretty good feed. That's real good feed. Yeah, it's got some dry grass in it, but it's got some good green in there, and uh, that's going to be running somewhere between eight and ten on uh, protein. And uh, you can ask me how I know that. We have had it tested in the past, and that's about what it runs in January. Uh, we are uh, January 12th. Yeah, we're in the month. The year. Two weeks almost gone. So I think just yesterday it was New Year's Eve. Anyway, they really did the hammer on this. There's one spot there they didn't move. Again, you can see what's under there. Super high quality feet. So we're on January 12th, and no hay's been fed yet to these bulls. Now, when they get down through this valley, clear to that house down there, uh, this paddock will be done for this rotation, and we'll pull them off, and we're gonna go to the other side of that barn over there and start over again. There's some really good feed in there that was grazed back in November. And I was careful, I only took about the top third of it. 
and so we have another grazing in there um, we are supposed to get some pretty good rain and then they're talking about uh, I don't know depending on the weather man what he says one day or the next but it's going to be somewhere between 8 and 12 below zero starting Saturday Sunday and Monday and then it gets back up into the low low 30s so you know it is january it's missouri we get cold not like you all do up in alberta <laughs> up in canada you guys are just tough man tough 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 i'll never forget uh, flying into there to do that conference in the winter time i think it was 28 below and the cab driver's like this is balmy you should have been here last week it was minus 40. Folks, it felt like my face was going to freeze off at minus 20-something. I mean, I guess you get used to it. Man, I couldn't. That was cold. I guess if you were born and raised in it, it's just part of part of life. But you see what they did here. They, they worked this paddock over. There's hardly anything that got left untouched. And see, those bulls are down there. One's playing in that cedar <laughs> down there by the lake. He's, he's boogering that cedar around. The rest of them are grazing. And if we'd have brought a bale out here and plopped it down and unrolled it, they wouldn't be over there grazing. They're like anybody. They're going to take the easy way out if they have access to that alternative method. But sometimes I've seen if the stock pile is good enough, they'll go root in the snow first, eat that stock pile, then they'll go eat the hay. Is the stockpile's green and the hay's not. So trust your grass. When I say grass, I'm talking, you know, fescue. Folks, if you don't have something green in the wintertime, I do, I feel, I get emails all the time, what would you do if you lived in southern Texas and all you got is Bermuda grass? And I'm like, well, I don't live in southern Texas. But if I did, you know, you're just feeding them dried up Bermuda grass and it doesn't have any protein in it, pretty much zero energy those cows those cows gonna need a little something need some proteins uh, i know a lot of people like to feed cubes uh, protein lakes corn gluten different uh energy uh what's the other one oh cotton seed cotton seed cake a lot of people feed cotton seed cake that one always amazed me I've been on farms where they fed it, and it just looks like you're throwing cotton out there on the ground. It's, but it's got a seed in it, and I guess it's got a lot of protein in that seed. But it didn't look very appetizing to me. But the cows were eating it, and, you know, they were keeping, keeping going. But, uh, yeah, Isaac and I moved these the other morning, and he'd been moving the cow herd, and, of course, they were unrolling a bale morning and night and we came over and did the bows like well great wintering's pretty easy and you just move a wire <laughs> i'm like yep that's right let the animals do the work if you have the forage and you can grow it let the animals do the work and uh we're going to be hosting our grazing school in may it's on our website greenpasturesfarm.net and uh, we got ian coming back from south africa and so that'll be our advanced three-day school the first week of May. And then following that, we're going to be doing a beginner's grazing school the, the very next week. And that's a two-day. So I'll be, hope to see some of y'all there. If you want to learn how to graze and not feed as much hay in the winter, that's a good place to start. And uh, we'll see y'all next time. Everyone have a great day.